This is the Thermal Master P2. It's one of the world's smallest thermal cameras, and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Upon unboxing, you'll find the quick start guide, a carrying case along with the camera inside, a carabiner, and a C-Type extension cable. The P2 is currently only compatible with Android devices. In this video, I'll be using it with the Samsung S22 Ultra, and I even got it to work with the Samsung S8 Plus. So if you have a newer phone or one that's equal to the S8 Plus, then the P2 should work with no issues. The P2 is extremely lightweight, weighing at only 10 grams, and it's about the size of a quarter. The P2 has a standard resolution of 256 by 192, with a thermal sensor range from negative 4 to 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has a feature called the X3 Resolution Booster, which boosts the resolution up to 512 by 384. That's double the standard resolution. Full disclosure, Thermal Master did reach out to me to test the P2 because they wanted to know my honest opinion since I've had several other thermal cameras on the channel in the past, such as the Seek Thermal Android camera and the HSF Tools thermal camera. Now I'm going to compare the P2 to the new Seek Nano 300, which was released the summer of 2024 and has a sensor resolution of 320 by 240 and costs the same as the P2. The first feature I want to compare is the startup times. During the initial startup test using the P2, it took just about 11 seconds for it to start up from the time of plugging in the device. The Seek Nano 300 took just 9 seconds to start up with the annoying caveat that sometimes it wouldn't start up at all and it glitched out. It always does this. And there was an issue with pixelization in the sensor and it kept glitching out. And sometimes you'd plug it in and it would just freeze. As far as run times and video recording length and file size, both cameras run off of your phone's internal storage and battery. So how long the device lasts is really a matter of how large your phone battery is and how much internal memory your phone has available. For reference, a 5 minute video is equal to about 34 megabytes of memory, and during discovering that fact, I noticed that my phone unexpectedly recorded the video in 720x960 resolution. I really wasn't expecting the resolution to be that high with the file size being so small, so it's a pleasant surprise. Now let's take a brief tour of the modes and general operation of the Thermal Master P2. On page 2 in the manual, there is a QR code that you can scan. It will bring you over to the website where you can officially download the app from the website. And that's going to be in the form of an APK packet that you can download. The app is also available on the Google Play Store as well for those that don't want to use the QR code. And it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is follow the prompts on the screen. And once the app is installed, you're going to go ahead and give it the permissions that it needs to operate on your phone. Phone. Everything in this demo has been sped up a little bit, but the actual process for downloading and installing the app, it takes about two minutes. And once you fully allow access from the thermal camera to your phone, it's going to go ahead and start up right away and it's ready to use. And this is what it's going to look like. All right, guys, we have the P2 here today. This is what it looks like. And we're going to go ahead and use the extender for the C-Type. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this because my phone case is a little bit girthy, so this is the best way to go about it. And we're gonna go ahead and select the app. It's gonna open right up and it's gonna bring you into this menu here for the camera. You got your gallery, your settings, and customer service. We're gonna hit the camera button and the camera's gonna start right up and you're gonna be able to see what's in your line of sight here. I have an Olight flashlight on high so that way you can see that it's nice and warm and that's going to give us something to work with. So at the top of the screen here, you're going to see the temperature parameters. I always put it on the auto so that way, you know, you have your perimeter from negative four all the way up to 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit in this particular mode. I always have the X3 on because that's going to make the resolution a lot better. You're going to be, see, be able to see a lot more detail. So that's what we're going to do with that. Over here on the top right hand corner is your refresh for calibration. I press that button and you can see now it's calibrated successfully. Now let's start off with the first little option here. You're going to see point, line, rectangle, circle, and then the color for the font in the background. So on the opposite side here, you're going to see on the right, we have the temperature range from 119 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to 73. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, if I wanted to select a specific point on the screen, I hit point 
I select where I want on the screen and it's gonna give me all the different points. And you can do up to three at a time for the different points. And if you want to clear out of that, you just hit delete. If you want to do lines, intersection lines, you can do up to three at a time. And it's gonna give you the hot and cold spots on there as well, right on the screen. And you want to change the font color. Well, let's change it to red, hit confirm, and that's what it looks like. You want to change it to white or blue. That's what it looks like as well. And of course, you want to switch over to rectangle and add a rectangle on there, another parameter. That's pretty cool, you can add that too. If you want to do just the rectangle, select that. It's gonna give you the hottest and coldest spots on there. And then you can go over to circle. And if you wanted to put a circle in there, you could as well. And you can delete that as well. Or if you just wanted to just put the circle, it's gonna show you just the temperature in that spot. And you can move it around on the screen too as well. I'm gonna hit delete there. And that's the options for that particular scenario. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and go over to the color palettes, you have white hot, you have black hot, iron red, red hot, rainbow, jungle, aurora, city, low light, gold, lava, and medical. And that's what those look like when we scroll through. Personally, I think they're all pretty good. Great options, but I'm used to the iron red, so I'm gonna stick it in that mode for now. And then go ahead and you go over to the camera mode. You'll have a gallery, you'll have the actual shutter, and then you'll have the record button. So if I hit record, that's what it's gonna do. And you can record as long as you want until the battery or the memory run out on your device. And if you wanna take a picture, you just press the button and that takes a picture and makes that little noise. And if you wanted to go ahead and do an, an overlay, you press the on button here. It's gonna give you an overlay of what you're seeing on the screen. You're gonna be able to change the parameter on that so that you can either see it or not see it. See how you can do that. And you can even change the reverse camera on the other side as well. And of course, you can turn it off if you don't want that at all. And then you have your first menu over here at the all far right. You're gonna have the brightness. I usually leave it right in the center and that's just gonna change the depth of field kind of. So if you wanna just see just specific things on the screen, it's gonna give you that. And if you wanna turn it all the way up, you're gonna be able to kind of see everything. It's kind of crazy. I, I just leave it right in the center at about 50. And then of course you have your contrast. I leave that all the way up because that kind of gives you good depth of field. So you're gonna be able to see a little bit more that's on in the background, the cold spots and the hot spots. If you put it right down to the 50% mark, you're gonna see basically just more of the hot, which is fine, that's, that's what you want. Um, but I leave it all the way up because I'm crazy. Then you have your scale. You can turn it on or off. That's gonna give you your parameters here on the side. And then there's an option to detect just specific parameters. So you can go ahead and adjust that by touching the screen and changing that as well. If you don't want to use that, you can uh, go back, but you can also select very specific parameters, which I like. And of course, there's mirroring, which changes and it changes the uh, degree and everything like that. So you can just go ahead and press those buttons and that's what that looks like as well. Also, another feature that I wanted to take note of here is that you can actually zoom in by pinching and zooming in like a regular camera on your phone, which I think is pretty cool. Another cool feature that I wanted to point out for you guys is that you can change in the settings here, the device temperature for Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. And of course, you can add an alarm. So say that you want to have a high and low temperature alarm, you can set the parameters and I'll put it, I'll put it at 80 degrees just for, for, for fun all the way down to 32. You can do an audible alarm and you can add vibration to this as well. So you'll have the audible alarm and the vibration for 80 degrees. We'll go back and we're gonna put this on. And when I turn the camera on and I look at the device or I look at the uh, object, it since it's over 80 degrees and you can see that at 114 degrees right now, it's gonna have the audible alarm. I think that's a pretty cool feature to have and I think you guys will appreciate that. 
So ba basically that's pretty much all she wrote guys. That's how easy this is to use. And of course, once you're done doing what you're doing, you can go over to the gallery and that's going to give you all the different options for all the things you just recorded on screen. That's what's See, that's what we just recorded just now. You can record as long as you want. And it does have audio. That's a very important feature to have on your thermal camera. Cause if you're making notes, you want to make a verbal audible note on a file. That's the best way to do it. So that's what this looks like. Now this is the Nano. This is what the case looks like. And this is what the Nano looks like in comparison to the P2. And that's what these look like together. You can see one's thicker, one's a lot thinner. And that's what it looks like, guys. Now I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna use the adapter. And it should start right up without me having to select anything. There we go. Yep, and now I got it to work. Now this is what it looks like. You can record video or you can take a photo. And it has the parameters on the screen for the hot and cold. Right there, you have your temperature. Now you can change your color palettes. On this one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whereas on the P2, you have 12. Um, so that's, I guess that's okay, but you know, it is what it is. And you have your spot where you can see exactly what you wanted to see on the screen in very specific place. So that gives you that option. Then you have your high and low temperatures as well. So it gives you the coldest and hottest. And if you want to change up those color palettes, you can do that as well while using the camera. It does record video, but it does not record audio. So when you record video, it's video without audio, which, which sucks. I don't like that. And then of course you could change that and turn that off. That's how simple this is to use. You do have the pass through where you can see it through your camera and through the device at the same time. It doesn't perfectly align, but it is what it is. And then of course you can turn that off. It's the same exact kind of options too as on the P2. You can switch the camera around, go to the other side as well, and then you can switch it back and then you can just turn it off. It doesn't have the option to make it opaque so you can, you can see through it or not, um, which, which is not, you know, I don't care about that feature that much. And then you have your watermark, your color bar, and your temperature units. And that's all she wrote for this. There's not a lot of really options here for this specific app. It's very simple, straightforward, but you could see the resolution's kind of grainy and it's not as good as the P2. And now for my final thoughts. The clear winner between the Seek Nano 300 and the Thermal Master P2 is definitely the P2. Why you might ask? The P2 loads up consistently on my device, it has good picture quality, it includes audio in the video, it's smaller, the carrying case is smaller and nicer than the Nano 300, and the camera feels premium, and there's a ton of more options in the app. It's just a better overall user experience, and to be honest, I kind of wish I never wasted my money on the Seek Nano 300. My only con with the P2 was that my computer did not want to load the software from the app, and to be honest, most users aren't even going to be looking for this feature. It's just so much easier to plug it into your phone and transfer the files onto your computer later. With that being said, the Thermal Master P2 retails for $249, but you could pick one up for $189 with a two year free from defects warranty from the Thermal Master website. You can also pick one up on Amazon and AliExpress. I'll leave a link down in the description. I hope this video has been helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Prepared Guy, and until next time, guys, stay prepared prepared. Hey there, thank you for watching. You can pat this cat.